G'day guys, how are we going? Well, into cooler upgrades and turbo upgrades, I've done both, but can you do one without the other? I know just a bloke to chat to, let's go and see him. Well, this is the bloke I've been talking about, Matt from Diesel Tune Australia. G'day mate, how are you going? Good, how are you mate? Really good mate. Now look, for those that are looking to do a turbo upgrade, and an intercooler upgrade, or, yep. and or, can you do one without the other, or is it highly recommended that you do both? Look, generally, if you're gonna do a turbocharger upgrade, we recommend doing an intercooler upgrade. Uh, the thing with a turbo upgrade is that we're going to turn the boost up, okay? And it may not be that much more boost, we might only put three or four pounds of boost in it, but the better airflow dynamics of the turbocharger allows us to maybe hold the boost for a longer period of time, which gives you a broader power band. Um, and, and that's really like, upgrading a turbocharger on a diesel should not be scary. Uh, we're just taking a really under-engineered or a small turbocharger and just making it slightly bigger and making it a bit more efficient. In that process though, when we make more boost, we're gonna make more heat. And if we add three, four pounds of boost, that could be 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit of increase in temperature. Um, now for every pound of boost, you're making about 10 degrees Fahrenheit of temperature. So if you've got 30 pounds of boost or 25 pounds of boost, that's a lot of temperature plus ambient. Okay, so you could be talking 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and we wanna manage that heat. Now, the factory turbocharger might only be putting 200 degrees and the factory intercooler will then deal with that. But when we turn the boost up, we need to manage the heat. Otherwise, we're sort of taking two steps forward and one step back, right? Uh, so that's when an aftermarket intercooler, such as the one in front of you, is, is a good idea. So a couple of examples here with a standard turbo. They look very, very similar. They do. Um, but what's the difference between the standard one there to the upgraded one? Sure, so these are Ford Ranger turbos. Uh, we do a lot of these, so very, very popular. Uh, the factory turbocharger is done by about 2,900 RPM. So it makes boost nice and early, and then just falls off into a hole. And the engine sort of revs and doesn't go anywhere. It makes a lot of noise, but no power. The upgraded turbocharger we do uh, with a better uh, compressor wheel uh, and, and reinforced uh, thrust bearings inside the turbocharger, designed for higher boost, uh, gives us a flat boost curve. So we can actually hold the boost that we want all the way to 4,000 RPM, and it just gives the engine a much more flexible feel, right? Again, in that process, we're making more heat. So we do need to, to, to keep on top of that with the temperature, with the intercooler. Uh, so in a nutshell, the difference is the compressor wheel is about 20% larger. Uh, it still comes on the same, so there's no sort of increased boost response or, or lag, um, but just that re-engineered air, airflow, airflow dynamics in the compressor wheel just makes it all work. And then we've got really other extreme with that one at the end there. Well, this is what I'd call a small turbocharger, <laughs> right, compared to these suckers. Uh, and this is going on a, on, on a V8 with another one, okay? Right. So there'll be two of these, and, uh, and that'll make, well, the goal is a thousand horsepower at the wheels, without going crazy like a good street car, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> not something you're gonna take to the high country, Tim. Yeah, right, so okay. you can't put that on the patrol. Well, we could. <laughs> It's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, but, but look, two of those on a, on a V8 is, is awesome. They'll still come on quite responsive, but you know, you'll, I'm sure you'll see some close-ups of the photo of yeah. the difference in, in size. I mean, these, this is a massive compared to this, and this is just a puppy. Some of them get absolutely massive. Um, hey, they're not much good for, for boost response, yeah. but uh, in terms of racing, that's where it needs to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then a couple of examples here, clearly showing with an intercooler upgrade. Yeah from the standard Ranger one yep. to what you would do with the up upgrade. There's yep. a big difference in size. Well, you felt the weight of it before, right? Yeah. How much difference is it? There's a massive amount of difference in weight. And yep. just the construction, you can see the difference in the construction of it. Yeah, so the thickness of the core, uh, the, the fact that even the tank's aluminium actually absorbs heat in the process. And what this is doing, uh, even the factory intercooler is designed to take the hot air from the turbocharger, the air then travels through the core, and gives up its heat to these fins. And then as you're moving, as the car moves down the road, the air traveling through the fins takes the heat away. So you might start here with you know, 250 degrees Celsius and come out at 60. 
So that's how efficient they can be. But what can happen is, like a small intercooler like this, a factory intercooler, you get halfway up the hill with the van on the back, you're back down in third gear, ah, oh, come on baby, let's keep going, and your foot's getting deeper and deeper into the throttle to try and maintain a speed. This has got to the point where it can't give up any more heat. The, the heat's just traveling in there too fast. You, the, the, the speed of the air coming through the core right, to take the heat away is, is slowing. Uh, and then, yeah, the power starts to drop off. There's actually a temperature probe in the end tank that tells the computer what the temperature is, right? And as it gets hot, the computer goes, hmm, let's start pulling some power out. Right when you need it, you know, you're going up the hill. And not only have we got a hot air coming out of it, but the computer's going, I'm going to manage the temperature and starts to pull power out, right? So then your car's going slower. Uh, and that's where we go to a larger intercooler like this one here um, that will just keep on sucking up the heat, keep on dispensing it into the air where we want it to. And the heat soak capability of, of that intercooler is a whole lot better than this intercooler. So that'll just allow you to keep trucking up the hill. And that's why we do it. Um, it's not just for an aftermarket intercooler or turbocharger. That's got a position or a place in any four-wheel drive that you want to upgrade or tow with. Right. So for those people then on the other side that um, may be looking to do just an intercooler upgrade, they're not wanting to do the turbo as well. Yeah. Can you do that? And if so, what are the benefits of just doing an intercooler? Yeah. Of course you can, and, and you don't need to tune it or anything. Like All we're doing is managing heat. So even with a standard turbo, uh, these things will still get hot. We've done testing uh, on the dyno with a, a Ranger, and we did run after run after run. Okay, Just didn't let the thing get a chance to cool down like you would be going up a hill. And we just watched the power fall off. We did then, then repeated the test with the intercooler on it, and the power stayed, stayed solid run after run after run. That just shows consistency, yeah? It's not putting any more stress in the engine, the engine's just getting nice, cool, dense air and it's doing what it should do. So that for me is, is one of the first upgrades that you should be doing to a, a turbo diesel uh, tow, tow rig or something you, you do forward driving with, a sort of yeah. low speed, high load. So you're up the side of billy goats and your foot's flat, things making lots of heat and you've got no airflow coming through the front. A big intercool is what's going to give you much more consistent power. So it's really, in my mind, a mandatory requirement um, for a lot of vehicles. Look, if you're just driving around the streets and, and that's it, you probably don't need it. But if you're towing with it, forward driving with it, an intercool is a, a good upgrade. Well, that's all very interesting stuff, mate. Look, for those guys, you know, maybe you are looking to do one or the other here or both, I hope um, you know, Matt's giving you some great advice here, some answers to all your questions. If you're looking to do one of these upgrades, whether it be an intercooler or the turbo as well. So mate, if people want to find out a lot more information, where can they go? So there's lots of information on the internet in terms of, you know, intercooler efficiencies and that sort of stuff. And I, you know, if you, if you are into it, there's heaps of information you can read about it and what a larger intercooler does compared to a, a standard intercooler. So because it's larger in capacity, the air slows down, it spends more time in there, you know, like it gives up more heat. So there's lots of technical sides of the intercooler, which I quite enjoy talking about. But if you're looking to upgrade your intercooler, mate, give us a call uh, or jump on Diesel Tune Australia's website and uh, we're happy to help you. Sounds good. Well, there you go, guys. And I've done both of these. I've done the intercooler upgrade and the turbo upgrade on my patrol. Absolutely fantastic setup that I've got there. Really love it. See you, mate. Thanks very much. That's great advice and we've got a good feedback there. Thanks for coming in, Tim. No worries, boy. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye.